getting into the park. It's quite interesting. I know I thought I was lost. You drive for a decent amount. It's at go, least a mile. Yeah, we go kind of up and down hills and curves and everything. It's better kept than a lot of these high-end resorts yeah. Yeah. that we've been to. Hey everyone, Izzy and MJ from Endless RVing with another campground review. This one is one of the nicest state parks we have stayed in. We absolutely love this place. We'll be back. It's a first time for us, but we are really impressed. We're going to bring you everything about this campground, what we think about it, and ultimately what does it cost. You're going to want to watch this whole video, guys. There's something at this park, and we've been to a bunch of state parks that we've never seen at another state park. So where are we? We are at Francis Slocum State Park in Wyoming, Pennsylvania. Now that is in the northeastern part of Pennsylvania. I hope I'm saying this right, Luzerne County. Luzerne County? Luzerne, Luzerne. Luzerne. It's 1,035 acre state park. Right in the center, they have mm -hmm. a 165 acre lake among some other things, there's a lot to do here. So we're going to take our Endless RVing campground criteria that we always use and put this campground through that. We do the must-haves first. So must-have, yep. we talk about location. So how is this for location? Uh, it's about two and a half hours from us. It's not really off of 80. It's probably 20 cent miles. No, about 31 miles off of Route yeah, 80. So, so not it's very a, direct. Not direct, yeah. but there's a lot of stuff around here. Mm -hmm. Like outside the park, there's stores and everything, but it's not directly off the highway. It's a little bit of a hike for us. Right. The next thing is getting in and out. So getting into the park, it's quite interesting. So you come into the the, the main entrance you see the office and then you start headed towards the campground now i thought i was lost there are signs all over it says family campground you just have to follow them but you drive for a decent amount it's at least a mile yeah but at, not le more. Oh, at least yeah before and you go kind of up and down hills and curves and everything but then you arrive into the campground now talking about the access roads into the campground everything is paved everything is well trimmed we didn't know that coming in because it's our first time here so as always have we suggested i sent mj out first with the truck to make sure everything was kind of appropriate for us but there's no issues getting in here the next thing is going to be level sites and this is really good i would hope that some private campgrounds would come take tours of these and they can learn how to level sites the yeah, sites really good. are very level here gravel sites very little leveling and we have a lot of room in our site yeah so our site is awesome like really great we almost don't even want to say the number so we no we're not saying no, the number no, no it's actually right next to the bathroom just give it away and it's fine it's okay <laughs> it's kind of a u-shaped so you just pull in and then we'll just simply pull out it's really beautiful but how it's different from a lot of other sites is with a huge back area like huge where we can actually hide behind the rv and there's a picnic table and firing and just plenty of place to keep our bikes and things it's great and the last must have is they allow pets so they do and they don't ban any dangerous breeds there's a cute the german park, shepherd yeah. yeah right next to us so no issues there actually i don't know if you saw it uh, there's somebody that has a puppy uh, Kane corso i did not it's see like a that. brindle with Ooh. like golden eyes it's it's a puppy, but this thing is going to be huge because its right. feet are enormous. And that's always on the, you know, restricted breeze yeah. list. Before we move on to our like to have things at campgrounds, we want to thank the official sponsor of this video, RV Snap Pads. Now, what is RV Snap Pads? It is the world's only permanent jack pad and we are at a site where you absolutely will want to have them. So there's so many benefits to the snap pads which we have been using for years. First of all, you're having permanent jack pads installed at all times, so no putting on and off. You're going to have increased stability for each landing foot. It's going to give you that added protection for your jack feet from any type of bending or damage. You're going to reduce slipping or sinking on soft surfaces if you are That's staying are in right dirt now. or grass or things like mm -hmm. that. Yep. And it's going to give you protection from indirect lightning strikes. Now, a couple of great things about RV snap pads. Number one, they're made in the USA. Number two, they're made out of 100% recycled materials they have a snap pad to fit whatever rv you have from motorhome to truck camper they have it all you're going to want to go on their website see what kind of rv you have they'll fit one to you they always give a discount to active military as well as first responders but if you don't fall into one of those categories you can use our discount code endless 10 you get 10 percent off so we've had this since we bought nelly 
over three years ago. Mm -hmm. We still have the original set on it. They're very durable. We absolutely love them. So the next one is like to have. So our first like to have is full hookups that we don't have. So we only have electric here and we actually have a 30 amp, but they do have a dump station and they do have potable water. All over the place. Yeah, yeah. like all around. The dump station's not far from us. They actually have potable water when you first pull in by the camp store, you can fill up there. There's one dump station, like MJ said. Mm -hmm. But 30 amp for this year is no problem because we have the soft stars, we have the lithium. We've right, had right. no issues yep. at all. It's actually really good because we save some money going to places with 30 yeah. amp. I don't think there's any full hookups here, right? Yeah, I don't believe there is. But they do have 30 and they have a 50. We just happen to get the 30. Right. Now let's talk about space. Let's talk about cellular signal. Space, <laughs> outstanding. Right. A lot of space. One of the bigger sites we've ever been on yeah, at, yeah. in any park. Now cellular signal, we thought it would be bad. I packed a big antenna because a lot of times we're kind of up high state parks a lot of trees no coverage but there is actually it appears i saw the cell tower i don't know if it's part of the park but there is a cell tower all the way up high the cellular is outstanding here at least on at and yeah. getting 83 down 13 up really good cellular i would imagine verizon's also really good so the next thing is not a lot of overhang we don't like that because it gets the roof all messed up this is like the perfect site because you have we have all of these beautiful trees. So when we're at our picnic table, we're shaded, but over Nelly, there's nothing. So it's completely clear above our roof with all the trees right behind us. So the next one is dog park. There's no actual dog park, but they say there's a dog walking path. There's plenty of trails and places to walk. So you're not gonna have an issue finding that. So yeah, if you're an active person, a lot of places to run. I went out not only to run in the park, but outside the park. If you're a hill runner, there's a lot of hills here. You're really gonna like it. But also the trails, or if you wanna be on the pavement, there's a lot of places to ride. We actually went out bike riding with some of our friends yesterday. MJ had her rad bike. I was using this new thing I'm trying out. Add motor, this is the wild tan. This thing is a, like a beast. It's a 1000 watt mid drive motor hydraulic brakes, air front fork. How fast was I going, going yeah, down the really hill? Really fast. We were doing like a throttle off. I was hitting and it was just yeah, and then right up the hill, me. going yeah. down the hill. It was really uh, impressive. So if you like uh, mountain biking or off-road trailing, or you just want to ride on the pavement, this is a park that has a lot of different options for you. So let's talk bonuses now. One of these bonuses is what I had mentioned at the beginning of the video that just kind of blew our mind. So the first thing is a camp store. They don't really have a camp store. It's a state park. They have an office, obviously, where you check in. They do sell wood over by yeah. that place we're going to talk about. Right. Next thing is scenery. So again, you're it's basic it's a state park you obviously have tons of trees and you know it, it's nice though because yep, yep, yep. it's kind of it's a little pretty. mountainous it's really nice yeah next thing is activities really have a ton of activities they have an outside amphitheater which we saw kind of in the woods it's it's really pretty i'm assuming they may do some some things there i don't know we didn't really see anything but they have on. playgrounds because when obviously when this place was built you can see it in the bathrooms it's from some time ago yeah it's when kids would play and you see kids on playgrounds but there's here. a lot of kids playing and a lot right. of playgrounds yeah a lot of playgrounds showers we've utilized the uh bathroom right next to us yeah they're they large and and uh Everything's clean. Yep. What? Laundry? No. Cafe? No. Again, state park. Well, no, are... they do have a cafe over by where we're going to talk about. Oh, that's right. I was going to say, what? They do have confused. a cafe. Okay. Bike lanes and trails, they have that. Fishing. So, as Izzy mentioned before, they have this huge, huge lake. It's beautiful. Surround. It's breathtaking, really. Um, so, you can go fishing. You can go kayaking. There's a boat you can launch bring right your own there. Boat. Yep. Yep. Which is great. Every site has picnic tables and you have your fire ring there, which is nice. Now, the last one. So, this is what we're going to talk about. Now, we've been to another state park that did have a pool. Okay? But it wasn't open. Right. A lot of times you don't see that. This pool here is like like a resort it's actually better than it's half the resorts huge. we've ever been it is enormous what's the max capacity like 1760 people, people i believe yeah but there weren't that many people there no they have two water slides and it's surrounded by all this grassy area so even though there were a lot of people there 
you didn't feel it. Um, they don't have chairs though, so you got to bring towels or your own chairs or whatever. But it was beautiful, and they had they have bathrooms. They have a cafe, which basic yeah. stuff: ice cream, yeah. French fries. Yeah, they're, they're Hot basic. Dogs, things like but that. what they don't do is they don't take advantage of you. So like a bottle of water was one dollar. Yeah, the prices fries were, really were good. four bucks, right? So kind of like that old school feel. Mm -hmm. Very inexpensive. We'll talk about the price momentarily. If you're enjoying the video so far, we invite you to hit the subscribe button below. Hit the notification bell so you know when we release new videos or go live. Also, we have a private Facebook group we want you to join. It's called RVers Coming Together. Endless RVing, RVers Coming Together. And we also have a free monthly newsletter. The link to sign up for that is below. All right, let's talk about deal breakers. So the first thing is breed restrictions. As I mentioned before, none. Uh, next one's gonna be bad reviews. They have really good reviews. For good reason, it's a really nice place. Yeah, and the last one is bad landscaping and lack of maintenance. No, no, things no. Trim. the grass is cut, the, the trees are kept nicely, well manicured. It's Again, I, I commented to MJ is that, you know, we'll talk about the price, it's a state park. It's better kept than a lot of these high-end resorts yeah. Yeah. that we've been to that are really poorly kept and run down. And expensive. And expensive. Yeah. It's really nice and good value for your money. So let's talk about the cost. We are here on the holiday weekend. We stayed for three nights. The total for three nights, including tax and their registration fee, $128.50. That breaks down to about $42 and 80 something cents a night. Really good deal. Like if we would have went to a KOA, we'd be upwards of 300 plus yeah. easily. And, and we'd have screaming kids and everybody packed in the pool. All the kids are really nice, well behaved here. And yes, you get that huge pool, that resort style pool. It was, there were some people there, like we got there early, there was really nobody in there. And then when we left, there was more people coming yeah. in, but it's such a big pool. There was still plenty of room. We actually should mention there is a small fee to use the pool. I yes. forgot that. So if you're staying in the park, it was four dollars a person. You can actually come out if you're not staying, and then I think it's seven, seven dollars. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. Four dollars per day. Right. But that's they're open from eleven, I believe, until six. Mm -hmm. So you can stay out there all day. 